everyone welcome you back to my channel um last day prophetic hub um it focuses on the second coming of the lord and the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom the lord has given me a mandate to preach the gospel of the kingdom now this is the message that he has called me to teach and to preach wherever I go. If you have not yet gotten a copy of the book, Kingdom at Hand, and the Lord has asked me to write, you can click the link on this site and get your copy. A lot of the things that I'm teaching here is in the book. The Lord asked me to write this book on March 7, 2023, at 6.56 p.m. I have written it from an eschatological perspective, but now the Lord is dealing with me again from another perspective of the kingdom at hand. Recently, he has shown me that there are two phases to this kingdom that is at hand, and we are in the last phase. And that's what I want to touch on today to bring it out, to bring out what the Lord has shown me while I was waiting on him and thinking about it, meditating on it. He began to show me this. So the kingdom at hand, there are two phases. The first phase was preached initially by John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the beginning of the preaching of the kingdom of heaven, which is the first phase of the kingdom at hand. Another scripture that supports this is Matthew 4, 17. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's confirmation. Let's go to Matthew 10, verse 7. After Jesus came out of the wilderness, and he began to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Later on, as he began to teach and to prepare his disciples to minister the kingdom of heaven on the earth, he said this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was when he sent the twelve on the mission. And he gave them power to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. And he said, freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, neither script for your journey. And in whatsoever city or town you enter, inquire who is worthy and there abide till you go hence. And when you come into a house, salute it, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart out of the house, shake off the dust of your feet. Then in verse 16, he said, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. And then he said in verse 17, Be aware of men, for they will deliver you up into councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought for governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentile. And when they deliver you, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not you that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. 
And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, the father, the child, the children shall rise up against the parents and cause them to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Be he that endures to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee to another city. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man comes. So this scripture here, it, it has a twofold um, interpretation. But I really want to look at when this was given and what the Lord Jesus said to the disciples. He said, preach the kingdom of heaven. So not only did John the Baptist started preaching it, the Lord Jesus preached it, and then he sent out the disciples even before he died and resurrected. He told them to go out and preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so as he was teaching them in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, he also told them that the kingdom of God is in you. And then he also taught them in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this was the first phase of the kingdom at hand. It was the kingdom of heaven that the Lord Jesus brought to earth initially when he came the first time. So what is it really? If you notice that since that time, 2,000 years ago, um, when the Lord Jesus brought this kingdom of heaven on earth, the earth is still under the rulership of the enemy. He runs the earth. So what the Lord was doing was he was bringing the kingdom of God to the earth while the devil was ruling. So essentially, the kingdom of heaven is really an embassy, came in the form of an embassy on the earth. So while the enemy was still ruling the earth, the Lord Jesus established his kingdom on the earth through his disciples. Amen. The time had not yet come for the Lord to fully take over the earth. So these were embassies. Why was this necessary? It was necessary to give the citizens of the earth an option to choose between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the earth. So the disciples were given the responsibility to go out and preach the gospel, the kingdom. That's why the Lord Jesus told them the kingdom was in them. But before the kingdom would come in them, they had to go to Jerusalem and wait to be endued with power. What happened at Jerusalem was the kingdom of God came into them. In other words, God came inside of them and enthroned himself inside of them, which meant that they had given over to his rulership. When they did that, their responsibility was to release the frequencies heaven on the earth to give all the citizens of the earth an opportunity to come in and be saved. It's an option. This has been going on now for over 2,000 years. Now, I want you to think a little bit about what an embassy really is. Let's take, for instance, the United States of America. If the United States want to have rulership in, let's say, a country like Russia. They set up an embassy. So on that little area where the embassy is, that area belongs to the United States. And every United States citizen that is living in Russia can run to that place for refuge. Once they get to that place legally, they are protected from the government of Russia. So it's a little piece of the United States in Russia is the same thing. The kingdom of heaven is a piece of heaven on given people, citizens of the earth, opportunity to come into the kingdom of God. Now, I have come to understand that there are three places where God has established this on the earth. Number one is in his people. Every single person who is born again and has given their life over to the Lord and is filled with the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God comes and lives inside of them, and they become a kingdom of 
heaven on this earth. In other words, they are an embassy. Their responsibility is to release the frequencies of heaven on the earth through preaching and teaching, ministering to the people. The other place that I found this to be is in the church, wherever on earth we go and we establish a church in the name of the Lord that is being ruled by the principles of heaven. That's another embassy of the kingdom of God on the earth, which is the kingdom of heaven. So the church is a kind of kingdom of heaven on the earth. And the third place is wherever you and I go, you are born again, you will have the kingdom of God living inside of you. Wherever you go, you set up altars on the earth. Dedicate them to God. I have come to learn that. If I go to a new place, I always, the first thing I do, set up the kingdom of heaven right there. I dedicate in that place to God. And I set boundaries for the enemy to come in. Once you dedicate it to God, you keep it clean and pure. One of the places that each and every single one of us should separate and dedicate for the Lord specifically is our home, is your home. Your home should be a representative of the kingdom of heaven. Me personally, I do not allow anything and anyone in my home. Amen. So the kingdom of heaven is the first phase. It has been ongoing since the Lord Jesus Christ came. Now, I want you to go over to the second phase of the kingdom at hand. The second phase of the kingdom of hand is the kingdom of God. Luke 21, 31. And it says, So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is not at hand. What things is Luke talking about? This particular book, Luke 21, in conjunction with Mark 13 and Matthew 24, delineates all the that are going to come upon the earth prior to the second coming of the Lord. So the Lord Jesus Christ was telling the disciples that when they see these things, and he's talking to us now, his disciples, when we see these signs coming up on the earth, know that the kingdom of God is at hand. So what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the Lord God Almighty coming to take over the earth in its entirety. In other words, it will no longer, we will no longer have embassies on the earth, but the earth will come under the full control of the Lord God Almighty. So once again, the earth will come under the domain of the rulership of God. It is different from the kingdom of heaven. This is the second phase. So the Lord told his disciples and he's telling us today when you see these things the kingdom of God is at hand and it's happening now the Lord Jesus taught us the book of Revelation in 2020 and he said that the book of Matthew 24 is a mini revelation he did not say it but Mark 13 and Luke 21 are versions different versions of the same thing they are talking about the signs that are coming up on the earth before the second coming of the Lord. You do not need a binocular to see that these signs are happening now. So the second phase of the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. It means that the Lord Jesus Christ is soon to return. This is the message that the Lord has mandated me to preach now. All you have to do is take a look around the world and you see these signs are coming to pass. And in, in, in Matthew chapter 24, the Lord Jesus said something specifically. When this time comes, the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the earth as a witness to all nations and then shall the end come. So what the Lord is saying is that now we must be preaching in addition to everything else that we are preaching, we're preaching about the gospel of salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of other things. But now we need to include the coming 
of the kingdom of God to take over the earth. We now need to add that and let the people know that he is coming soon. The kingdom of God is coming soon. And when we preach that, the people will begin to prepare themselves. That's what it is all about. And that is why he told me, write the book. And he gave me the title of the book. It's called Kingdom at Hand. I wrote it. Once again, from an eschatological perspective, but now the Lord wants me to write the second version. And it's no longer eschatological, but it is about the powers of God. The second outpouring of Joel 2.28. Hebrews 6 verse 5, the powers of the age to come. Romans 8.19, rising of the sons of God. The Moses and Elijah company, the two witnesses in the Middle East. These things are about to come upon the earth right now. My brothers and sisters, before the Lord Jesus comes, and before the second phase of the kingdom comes to earth, there is going to be a glorious anointing that is going to be poured out upon the church. The Lord wants me to tell you this. There is going to be a glorious anointing that is going to be poured out upon the church. Isaiah 60. Verses 1, 2, and 3, it says that darkness will be upon the earth and great darkness upon the people, but a glorious light will shine to dispel the darkness. Where is that light coming from? It's coming from inside of us. That light is in us, my brothers and sisters. It is going to shine. There is going to be a mighty move of God upon this earth. Unprecedented, never, ever been seen. Upon the earth. The Lord God have been talking to his prophets about this. And the time is very close. So I don't want you to pay attention to all of these negative things that you see going on around the earth. The killings and the fightings and the war. These are the this is the darkness. I want you to focus on what God is about to do in your life. And in order for you to be a part of it, I want you to understand one more thing. The church has moved from the New Testament age into the prophetic age. The last days remnant church is a prophetic church. If you are a prophetic church, you're moving in the right direction. The reason for the prophetic church is God is calling his people now to have one-on-one -on -one relationships with him. He is calling his people to come into the Holy of Holies. Not to linger anymore in the outer court where all the emotional things are, where all mental problems and, 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 and oppression and anger and all of that stuff that holds us back. God wants us to get out of that. He wants us to grow and he wants us to go into the holy place where the menorah is. He wants us to where the, where the table of showbread is and where the altar of incense is because these are the places where you begin to walk with God, where you begin to build up your relationship with God and grow, then he pulls you into the Holy of Holies. This is the prophetic application of the church today. God is calling his people to that. The church is prophetic now. If you are still an old church, an old system, then you're missing what God is doing now. Get out of that church. Get out of religion. Each and every one of us is now called. That's why the Lord said that he set up the fivefold ministry in the church for the building up of the people, for the maturing of the saints, and for the operations. All of us now are going to become ministers. We ought to be working together. Everybody now needs to mature. This is what it means when it talks about Romans 8, 19. The sons of God must manifest. The sons of God are going to manifest. Who are the sons of God? It's the man child in Revelation chapter 12, where John saw in the heavenly a woman pregnant, getting ready to give birth. Who is this woman? This woman is the church. It is Israel. Both are getting ready to give birth to the man child, the mature sons of God. The other thing that the Lord began to show me, I was shocked the other day to find out I was reading in the book of Exodus. When I got over to Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13 and verse 15 and Exodus 34, 19 and two other verses in the book of Numbers, I know that the Lord said, all that open the matrix belong to me. 
it took me right back to the movie The Matrix that came out in 1999. It was talking about a birthing. I went back and I did a research on the word matrix. The word matrix, the Greek, the Hebrew for is rakam. It means a womb, a birthing. So that, may, that movie was projecting what was going to happen in the now. We are now living in the matrix, which is a virtual world, a virtual reality where frequency, frequency has taken over. There's a birthing that is going on in the world, in the matrix. God, while that birthing is going on, God is birthing his people. The man child, the mature sons of God are going to manifest to bring the kingdom of God home. Amen. I know I don't have a lot of time here, but that's the reason for the birthing of the man-child. We cannot know any longer keep the people as babes in the church. We need to hold them responsible so that they grow up. Get out of that out of court. Do not allow anger Emotions. Don't get involved in things that causes you to be suppressed. Mental problems. The way to counter all of that is to meditate the word of God. Day and night. To build an altar in your house. And have a relationship. A daily walking relationship with God. God will help you to overcome all of those things. Amen. Those are fleshly things. What is happening. Is that your soul. The fallen nature that came to the forefront is dominating your life. There is a battle that is going on between our born-again spirit and our soul, our soulish man. Adam fell. Before Adam fell, the Bible said that he was naked and not ashamed. That means he was covered in the glory of God. He was His garment was a garment of light. And his spirit, which was flawless, rule his body after the fall that went away because his soul came to the forefront and began to rule his body so now what we have is a soulish body which is subjected to death and hurt and pain and anger and all kinds of things we cannot allow them to rule god has given us a way to overcome that to get the spirit man back in alignment to get the spirit man back into rulership of our body and the way we do that we align our spirit man and let our soul be subjected to our spirit by learning how to wait on God learning how to walk before God learning how to talk with God learning how to hear the voice of God learning how to hear the instruction of God God wants to talk to us when he speaks to us he speaks to us in our spirit not our minds not our flesh, our spirit. This is something that we need to learn now. The church must come out of, out of the New Testament period and into the prophetic period where you can walk into the Holy of Holies like Moses did. Moses was the only one in Israel who was able to go into the Holy of Holies any time. Because of what the children of Israel did, God moved the tabernacle out of their midst. It was a sign that God has rejected them. He no longer wanted to be in their midst because they rejected him. Because they were walking in filthiness. They were walking in sin. They were walking in darkness. They didn't want to be obedient. At one time when Moses went upon the mountain and said, where is that Moses? We don't know where he is. Build us a God and, and forced Aaron to build a calf. And when Aaron built the cap, they said, this is our God who brought us out of Egypt. That's the outer of the outer court activity. God had to move his tabernacle away from them because of that. Because they didn't want him. He even warned them, stay away from idolatry. Stay away from serving other gods. They did not listen to him. They went up to the gods of the Babylonians. They went up to the gods of the Medes and the Persians. They went up to the gods of the Greeks, the Romans. And that has been going on forever and ever and ever. But now the time has come. The time has come where the kingdom of God must come back. The kingdom of God is going to take over the earth. And God is gathering a people. A people who have separated themselves. Who have come to a place of maturity. To bring it home. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Revelation. 
But this set of mature sons of God will rule, will rule in the millennium with the Lord Jesus with a rod of iron. It is coming. The second phase of the kingdom is at hand. Are you ready? Let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this work. I pray, Lord God, once again, you give your people listening. They may hear and understand. Meditate upon this word, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.